Hello and welcome to another video on biology by Perfect Scores. This is Preetan Thakur, and in this video, we are going to do an advanced concept which is known as polygenic inheritance. And this refers to the condition where one particular characteristic or a trait is controlled by more than one gene. And this is also known as multifactorial inheritance because there are more than one factors that are responsible for the inheritance. So these patterns, they usually follow a normal distribution curve. So that is a bell-shaped curve to show the distribution of individuals with the particular characteristic. That means it shows continuous variation. So if you plot uh, the number of individuals with respect to the characteristics, you will get a curve like this. So this is known as a normal curve or a bell-shaped curve. By increasing the number of genes, if the number of genes controlling a particular characteristic are increased, the number of phenotype combinations also increases. Which is something really logical to look at and I think it's really easy to judge from this. Let's take one example of polygenic inheritance which is the case of the human skin color. Now the human skin color is controlled by the amount of the dark pigment which is melanin. How much of the dark pigment melanin is present in the skin? That controls the amount of the pigment and um, what is the color of the human skin. Now at least four genes are responsible. There could be more but as of now at least four genes are responsible for determining the human skin color and for each gene one allele codes for the production of melanin, the other gene does not code for the production of melanin. And the combination of melanin producing uh, alleles, it determines the degree of pigmentation and that leads to continuous variation. So let's suppose those four genes are genes A, B, C and D. So A can have two variations, capital A, small a, that means dominant recessive. Similarly, you have capital B, small b, uh, capital C, small c, capital D and small d. And if you try to make a punit grid out of the different kinds of gametes that are possible, you will find that this gives rise to 64 combinations. So there are 64 combinations and if the first cross is between the completely homozygous recessive into homozygous dominant, it's going to give you a pinot square with 64 different combinations. So if this is the P generation, the parent generation, the F1 generation, so I'm doing everything in short because uh, you won't be probably asked to draw the entire punit grid and it's going to be a really uh, big structure. So in the F1 generation you need to cross the heterozygous gamete of one parent with the heterozygous gamete of the second parent. So that is the F1 generation and this will give rise to uh, lots of different combinations. So this is basically very very light that means no melanin is produced and this is very very dark. But you still need to know the ratio so we're basically going to get a range of different shades and the least one will be 1 by 64 and the darkest one is also going to be 1 out of 64. The middle one is going to be 20 out of 64 individuals and then you have 15 out of 64 on this side, 15 individuals out of 64 on this side and then finally 6 out of 64 on this side, 6 out of 64 on this side. So basically out of the 64 combinations, 20 of them are going to lie in the middle range. So if you plot this, these values on a graph, where this is 0 and this is 64, you will see the extremes are just 1 each. So they probably start from somewhere here. The middle one goes up to 20. So let's just put it till 20. So it comes till here. 
and the graph will follow a bell-shaped curve. That is what normal distribution is all about. Another example of polygenic inheritance is the green color in wheat. So specifically in wheat, wheat grains vary in color from white to dark red. That depends on the amount of the red pigment that the grains contain. Now for grain color in wheat, there are three genes that are responsible for controlling the color. And each of the, two, each of the three genes has two alleles. One that codes for a red pigment, the other that codes for no pigment, just like we had in skin color. The most frequent combinations, they have an equal number of uh, pigment producing and no pigment. That means they have this combination. So they have an equal number of pigment producing alleles and an equal number of non-pigment producing alleles. And again, the overall pattern of inheritance is going to show a normal distribution or a bell-shaped curve. So that is all that you need to know for polygenic inheritance. And I hope this was useful. So thank you so much for watching this video.